Hi, so this is just a, a video on how to get started with the System Understanding Aid project. And for our uh, purposes here at UNI, we are using the ESUA, or Electronic System Understanding Aid, which means even though we're doing a manual system, meaning we have to do automatically do all the postings, uh, for example, in the subsidiary ledger, etc., it is done on a website. So this allows uh, a couple different things. It allows every student to have unique numbers, um, as well as it does help facilitate in grading. Before we had large packets of paper and you would need a big desk. So there's some trade-offs there. So before we get started showing you uh, the actual ESUA system, I wanted to show you some resources that I've made available on uh, e-learning. So first of all, at the very top, you will find the purchase information and the there's a section code. Uh, this code will be different every semester, so uh, don't worry about that. Uh, make sure you get it from your e-learning system. And then we have the class instructions. So at the very top, um, you see the purchase information. So there's the link of how to where to buy this. And once again, there's the same access code. So as I said, we are actually doing a manual system, even though we're not actually doing physical paper, it's still a manual effort. Once we get to QuickBooks or once you ever work in other systems, you'll notice that once you enter in a source document, it automatically goes through the rest of the process. This is to help give students an understanding of how the data flows from a source document into the journal, into the ledger, into your trial balances, and then finally into the financial statement. So uh, by understanding that, that will help with if you audit or if you're ever working in industry. Also, uh, it also helps with understanding what some of the source documents are that are used typically in business. For example, Many of you may not know what a bill of lading is, so we'll get to use those documents in the context which they're normally used. So just some background information. So the project itself, you are going to do the accounting for two, two weeks, or basically two weeks, from December 15th through the end of the month. And then you will perform the month end and year end procedures. So this will include making the adjusting and closing entries, and preparing the financial statements and other reports. So you'll get to see how, uh, what these source documents look like and you know how it fits into the rest of the scheme. So a couple notes here. The actual accounting in this project is very basic. Um, sometimes students get overwhelmed by the forms. If that's the case, take a step back, think back to what you did in principles and most that's where you'll find out where most of the entries are. Think about what the entries are and what you learned there, and then go ahead and worry about the forms. So don't overthink the accounting part. It's really, this project is to focus on processes. With that said, one of the things that the project does is uses periodic versus perpetual inventory. So that does simplify things quite a bit. For example, it may not be the best method or actually gap approved, but it is okay for this. So one of the things we'll get is the transaction list uh, under documents once we get into the system. Once again, remember, each student will have their own transaction list. You will do the same transactions, but the amounts will vary from person to person on certain items. So I still, you still may work together, but this way you have to do your own calculations and make sure you understand the flow a little bit better on your own. Um, so the system actually breaks down the project into two parts. We're going to do this in two pieces. So or the system breaks it down to four parts. We're going to actually do it in two pieces. So starting when we start the project, you'll want to read part of the instruction book, which I'll show you where to find, and kind of skim the reference book. At least know what is in the reference book so you can uh, go ahead and use that when appropriate. So on March, so for us, check your deadlines here, but there'll be a new deadline. Um, 
for this semester, it was due is going to be due at eleven fifty nine p.m., which is what I have over there, and in the syllabus, not at the ten a.m. So, but there will be consistent uh, dates on your on what is on e learning. Um, there's going to be two activities that you'll that are due. So it's going to be transactions part one, which is going to be December. 16th through the 22nd and transactions part two, which will be the remaining for December 23rd. Now, one of the things about the system is it is what we call auto graded. So I do have the ability to override, but it's going to do the initial grading for you. Now, the thing is uh, you have hints and you actually have check figures that you can use. So when you're done with all the transactions, you can uh, go ahead and submit auto grade. And for each section, so for, for example, for the transactions from December 16th through the 22nd, you can actually hit auto grade three times. So the key is you don't hit auto grade until you've completed the transactions from the 16th through the 22nd. You click auto grade and then you are given some hints on how to fix it. Um, and then you can hit auto grade two more times and each time it'll give you a hint and your score. And then you go ahead and complete uh, transactions uh, for the December 23rd through the 31st. Once again, from these, it, within that group of transactions, you have the ability to submit auto grade three times. So within this first section, you will be able to submit auto grade six times, three for each subsection within the system. And then on March 25th, you will turn in the remainder and this will be month end and year end. Once again, you will have the ability to select auto grade three times for each of those. Uh, here's some hints. I also have those same hints and probably continue to add to those on e-learning. So let's close this. And I'm going to go ahead and go to e-learning. So there's your instructions. Here is the link to get into the SUA project. Hopefully by the time you have uh, are looking at this, you've actually purchased the project and are able to log in. Here are those hints that I've been talking about. So I would look through those. And here's the video playlist from the publisher that gives some hints. And I will also post a link to this video. So that's probably here when you look for that. Okay, so I have actually already logged in to Armand Dalton. Uh, so the website is armanddaltonresources.com and you'll go into the dashboard. Uh, my system is going to look just slightly different. I'll try to point out the differences that I know of as we go. So I'm going to click on this drop down and select activity overview. And yours will actually say transactions one, transactions two, and then month end and year end. So it's just a slight difference there. So transactions one is still exactly as I was talking about is the 16th through the 22nd. So I will go ahead and select that and proceed. All right. So let's talk a little bit about navigation first throughout the site. And then we'll, uh, I'll also give some hints of things that I think you should print just to make your life easier. And I think you'll see that as we go. So the first thing here is your project instructions. So just to flip through this a little bit, you got your table of contents, which will be handy. Um, a little bit about the nature of this project, how you prepare the documents, and really the instructions are pretty much the same from the manual system, the paper system. So even though we are using a cloud-based electronic system, we're using what looks like paper forms. We just have it so you can type it in rather than handwriting it. Uh, so some of the things you'll need, and you'll see those. One of the things it points out is this virtual file cabinet. 
So periodically in the documents, you'll see that you should use the virtual file cabinet to file because one document might go to a county, one document part of the documents may go to a, a supplier and another one goes to purchasing, for example. We could go ahead and file those, but honestly, don't, don't worry. Uh, don't worry about where they go in the file cabinet. If it, you need, if you feel better putting them, just put them all in accounting. The time it takes to separate the documents into the correct folders uh, is not really value added. And that is not something the auto grade checks, nor will I. So uh, don't worry about that file cabinet. Uh, the documents, there are three types of documents. You'll have some blank documents, which you will finish, uh, start to finish. Some you will do a few things on, maybe sign them, review, or add something. And then some are just for reference that you use, uh, that you have information that you'll need. Once again, ignore this file folder information. We are not going to file. Um, so you, if you want, just put them all in accounting. So here's a little bit, once again, we already talked about what the business is. We're a wholesaler. Actually, I don't think we did. We just talked about what the, uh, transactions we're going to do, but, uh, Warren Sports Supply is the company and what we are is a wholesaler. So we buy sporting goods equipment from various suppliers and we sell them to mostly colleges, uh, and their sports department. So Basically, the operation of this uh, warehouse or distributorship is our source of income, and we make our money off of the differential between the selling price and our purchase price. We have a salary manager and two hourly employees. So at various times, you will be different employees. So here's the personnel structure. So Ray Kramer is our salary manager. You saw his name there on the bottom. And here's what he usually does. He's the person who actually does most of the approvals and oversights, uh, prepares uh, time cards, or not time cards, but your paychecks, etc. Jim Adams um, does a lot of the traditional accounting work, prepares all the journal entries and subsidiary ledgers. <clears throat> and Nancy Ford does a lot of what I would say typically clerk type functions, prepares purchase orders, prepares documents, then they go to review to either Jim or Ray, depending on what it is. Here's some other information. I'll show you where the chart of accounts is and the price list. Uh, we have some information about credit terms, depending on the company, uh, whether we're giving it to customers or from vendors. Our sales tax, so um, there's some information about sales tax. We are based out of Illinois, so uh, there's no sales tax on wholesale sales, at least at the time of this writing. Here's our inventory procedures, so just refresher of uh, a periodic method of inventory. When you get to payroll, here's all the information about payroll. There's your payroll rates. Here's your FICA rates, uh, Your how to calculate uh, state and, uh, state and federal unemployment taxes, etc. cetera. Um, uh, some other suggestions as well as your calendar. And at this point, uh, monthly transactions is not going to be done until part two or the second due date, uh, which is actually the third section within the project. So monthly transactions and yearly. For right now, you don't need to print those. This will be a little handier to print those uh, when you get to that point, the month end procedures and the year end procedures. Okay. So uh, the first link, that was on project instructions. Um, I want to point out here website instructions. So this is a little bit more on how to navigate the website. Down on the bottom is a PowerPoint, some PowerPoint slides with some tips. A lot of those I'm going to highlight there. This also goes to a, a playlist on e-learning and shows some videos. One of these we used in class to help you get through transaction uh, the first transaction. 
We already looked at those project instructions. Uh, this website here is also linked on eLearning. Here's your flow charts. So this tells you how to prepare things uh, a little bit. I would highly recommend that you download these and possibly print them. So I'm actually downloading those now. And I'm going to open them in a PDF. So I think, at least from my experience and talking to other students, it is probably going to be a lot easier if you have these in hard copy. And my computer is just taking a moment to go ahead and open those. But you can see here, uh, as that opens up, um, here's the process for sales. And this is actually what we're going to use for the first one, our first transaction in the next video. So you walk down the steps, you receive the customer purchase order. So that's a document that's given to you for reference. And then here off to the side, for example, Kramer approves and initials uh, caught on the customer purchase order if it's a credit sale. And then you note you follow the rest of the process. Now here it's telling you where to file or that you move these documents. And then we get a sales. We prepare a document here. We prepare another document here. Uh, we have somebody initial. And then we have all of our documents where we file them. And that is the part that I want you to ignore, where we file them. We're not going to worry about that. It adds a good half hour to the project. All right. So we'll come back to that here in a little bit. If you don't know how to complete a document, here are example documents under the sample completed documents. Uh, this is a file you can download. Um, I didn't find that one quite as necessary as some others. So you can see that there's examples for everything from a bank deposit slip to return requests, etc. And then here is your reference book. So this gives you information about the accounting processes. If you're unsure what a document is, such as the bill of lading, it has information of what the purpose is, how to fill it out, where you typically get the information. So it's kind of a handbook for an accountant at their uh, company, but it's very useful for you. Now, I'm not recommending that you read through it, but I would flip through it or at least look at the table of contents to know what information is available. So the table of contents is here. So if you're having trouble with flow charting, you can read that here. If you're having trouble understanding, for example, how we estimate bad debt, there's some information here. So be familiar with it and use it as more as exactly what it is, a reference book. Two more things I want to point out, and then we're going to conclude this video and then open up another one to go through the first transaction together. So what about these transactions? You get those from the transaction list. So this is a document that I highly recommend printing out. I don't have it downloaded here, but because I actually have a printout and I know you can't uh, see that because it's a little blurry at the moment on the screen, but print this out. Once again, this transaction list will vary by person. So each person will have different transaction list. You have your chart of accounts. So this will list each account in the in this project that we would use. So you have all of your assets, your liabilities, equities, income statement, and revenues. So notice they follow a similar pattern to what we discussed, that they're all in the order of, of your uh, financial statements. Okay. This one you could print. It's not quite as critical as I would say the transaction list and the price list. So here's the price list. This is one I would also recommend having a hard copy for. And the reason is it also this will vary from person to person. Okay, so 
uh, the price list does vary. On this price list, you will have both a selling price and um, a cost. Here we go. I'll make that a little bit bigger just so you can see it. So here's everything we order from Velocity Sports, and that's the only one we're, vendor we're going to be dealing with. So here's the cost that we buy it at, and here's the selling price. Okay? And if you get stuck which one to use, think about it. Do we want to buy at a lower price or sell and then sell at a higher price. So that's kind of what you want to keep in mind as you go. Sometimes, as I said, don't get overwhelmed by the project. Take a step back and think back to basic accounting principles or business things that you would have learned. All right, so we're going to conclude this video and then we're going to come back and actually do transaction one. Uh, we're going to walk through that. Okay, so this will give you a chance to go ahead and print the transaction list, your flow charts, and price list uh, if you haven't already. All right.